do you really treat the fast food employee the same way that you treat, I don't know, a civil engineer? Like every time I go into a McDonald's, which has been uh, three times in my life, and uh, they are the greatest regrets that I've had uh, in my entire life. <laughs> Uh, and I, and I have tried crystal Pepsi on purpose once you guys said, I, I <laughs> yeah, the nineties were magic. And, and I got to say going into a McDonald's was significantly worse. <laughs> I, I will drink a case of crystal Pepsi if I never have to set foot into a McDonald's again. Uh, <laughs> But, but every time I go in there, there's always someone screaming at the kid behind the counter, right? There's always someone going, how fucking hard is it to make a goddamn burger? But we don't do that to a civil engineer that has to design bridges, right? We don't, we don't go out there and yell, how hard is it to prop up the infrastructure of a growing economy, you piece of shit? Like, we don't... <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> no, so much. No. Welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Uh, hey, so you might, uh, you might hear some laughter in the background of this episode, and that's because it was recorded in front of a live virtual stand-up comedy audience uh, via Zoom. I've been doing uh, these uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Shows, and then they eventually get recorded, and then they become the episodes of Fork Full of Noodles that you are watching today. They happen uh, almost every single Friday night, uh, and they're going to be happening all through July, all through August, and well into the fall as well, since we are in the, the digital age of the quarantine. So I've, I've pivoted a lot of my performances uh, to be online and to be via Zoom. So if you are interested in being a part of the live virtual stand-up comedy audience, I hope you do. Uh, you, can, you can get those tickets uh, right in the link below, or the description below, not the link below, the description below. Uh, you can click on the link and that'll take you to all of the ticket links uh, for all of the dates that uh, are available in July and August. And you can keep an eye on the dates and keep up to date with uh, when I'm gonna be doing uh, fringe festivals and other live performances uh, via Zoom virtually um, on my website at krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N.com. Uh, so go and check it out there. And if you would like to uh, support the show, if you would like to support uh, all of the other projects I do from uh, the interview podcast to the rantier videos to the you know shorter current events new segments that i do uh you can be become a sustaining member right on my website uh via my website or patreon or Bandcamp, uh or you can make a one-time donation as well uh this is how i am currently earning my uh earning my living so this is uh th that would be that'd be super helpful <laughs> if you guys decided to become sustaining members and i uh, hope that you do i hope that you come to the to live stand-up comedy show and now without any further ado let's dive into this week's episode the strikes in the labor movement were on a decline in in the second half of the 20th century though right but in the last few years we have seen the power of labor growing uh and in 2018 just in 2018 alone we saw a uh, way more strikes than we did in the last 30 years combined So uh, teachers went on these wildcat strikes for better pay all across the country in states like West Virginia, Oklahoma, Arizona, and what was called the Red State Revolt, which I'm fairly certain that was an attempt to like propagandize these strikes, but it just made them sound super badass, right? <laughs> like who doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it, who doesn't want to join the Red State Revolt? Like I do, I'm, I'm there. Get, send me on the picket, I'm in, you know, that sounds awesome. Now, this led to a bunch of solidarity strikes with hotel workers and even healthcare workers. 
All the way back in 2006, on May 1st, May Day, Latino activists fought back against the harsh immigration bill with a day without immigrants, which led to tens of thousands of immigrant workers not showing up to work, which caused Tyson and Cargill Foods to basically shut down. And many suburbanites were left without their frozen meals and had to do the unthinkable, you know, cook for themselves. <sighs> <laughs> Never dreamed, right? The streets were just flooded. They were flooded with white folks wandering around in yoga pants, you know, holding up a frying pan, lost, disheveled, confused, asking if somebody could find their consuelas. Yeah. Freedom to fry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we have to ask the question, right? What is it going to take to, to make a general strike happen in our society? And one of the few things we have to do is utilize the power of strong established labor unions. But since unions have lost power in the last few decades, it falls down to labor activists, mutual aids, the democratic socialist movements, and we the people, just average citizens like you and me. Look, unions are way too used to losing and usually end up bending to the, the will of the bosses because of lack of morale. That's usually why they lose, right? But we can bring up the morale right in the rank and file with people that deliver and prepare food, take care of medicine, have conflict resolution, use art for positive and more educational means, right? There, there's trust in the collection and allocation of money. And all of this revolves around people trusting and caring for each other. Now, mix that with broad class anger, and you have the stage set for a general strike. Right now, with the Black Lives Matter protests and the lack of any health, safety, or economic measure from anybody in the establishment or the donor class, the class anger is here to stay. You know, th this is pretty much the working class coming out and being like, hey, we're here and we're mad. And we will burn this shit down if you don't start listening and just get the fuck out of our way. Because we are, we will burn this shit down. So class anger is, there's plenty of class anger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So now that we have that, what is the next step? The next step is to permeate the public with the idea of the general strike. Talking about strikes and what they are consistently so people know the truth instead of what corporate media propagandizes them to be. You know, networks like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, all always perpetuate these anti-strike propagandas because that means that the owners of these networks will end up losing money to someone like, I don't know, the makeup person that makes Rachel Maddow look less clinically insane. Now, there are some other challenges that, that, uh, that come up wh when we're talking about general strikes. Uh, one of the major challenges is just bridging the divide within the ranks, right? There is a lot of divide within the working class ranks. There's white collar, blue collar, middle class, lower class. And this exists in just the general way that we treat each other, right? Classism in America is based on the type of job that you have. I mean, think about it. Do you really treat the fast food employee the same way that you treat, I don't know, a civil engineer? Like every time I go into a McDonald's, which has been uh, three times in my life, and uh, they are the greatest regrets that I've had uh, in my entire life. Uh, and, I, and I have tried Crystal Pepsi on purpose once, you guys. I, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> and, the 90s and, were magic. Yeah, the 90s were magic. And, and I got to say, going into a McDonald's was significantly worse. <laughs> I, I will drink a case of Crystal Pepsi if I never have to set foot into a McDonald's again. Uh, but, but every time I go in there, there's always someone screaming at the kid behind the counter. Right? There's always someone going, how fucking hard is it to make a goddamn burger? Well, we don't do that to a civil engineer that has to design bridges, right? We don't, we don't go out there and yell, how hard is it to prop up the infrastructure of a growing economy, you piece of shit? Like, we don't, 
<laughs> my God. <laughs> we, we, we're just divided in, in, in these levels of jobs that we have too, right? We, every, every, every corporate job that I've had, there's always these weird tiers of jobs. There's entry level, there's managers, and then there's like a senior manager, and then a project manager. What the fuck that even means? I've never... <laughs> But here's the thing, managers are part of the working class. The story of Henry Frick proves that. You know, Andrew Carnegie put Henry Frick in charge of the Homestead uh, Steel Mill right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Frick was the face of, of slash wages and worker turmoil, despite him just following Carnegie's orders. And when Frick built a giant wooden fence around the mill, they nicknamed it Fort Frick, not Fort Carnegie. Frick also hired the Pinkertons to attack the striking workers, right? And Carnegie now used his position of power to coerce the governor to call the National Guard into Homestead. But Frick ended up being the face of it because he was there on the ground dealing with everybody. Frick was the face that everybody saw. By the end of it, when the Guard attacked the strikers and the townspeople, it wasn't seen as an attack from Carnegie. It was seen as an attack by Frick, who was the manager of this mill. Every time that Andrew Carnegie went out into the public, he would make these pro-union speeches, but then he would go behind the scenes and literally talk about how he wanted unions to be killed. He wanted union leaders to be killed out on the streets, right? And, and Frick is seen as such a terrible person that we use his name as a child substitute curse word, right? <laughs> yeah, we say Frick. <laughs> Yeah, we say frick instead of fuck. Frick. That's, frick. that's how much we, yeah, that's how much we don't like this guy. And I'm not, I'm not here defending Henry Frick, right? Uh, what I'm saying is the man should have sided with the strikers because Andrew Carnegie sold him out. And Carnegie was so delusional to his wealth that on his deathbed, he said, that he wishes that his friend, Henry Frick, was there with him. So when, this, when word of this got to Frick, Frick responded and he said, tell Mr. Carnegie, I will see him soon in hell where we are both going. Mm -hmm. Boom, that's a mic drop moment right there. <laughs> yep. <exactly. laughs> but he, but, but that, that is proof that you know, these managers need to be on our side. These managers are part of the working class. So they need to be on our side. Now, there are some union leaders that fear that a general strike right now would only fuel Trump's campaign. And what they say is that we should focus on his immorality. But that statement is looking at a, a very tiny part of a universal calamity, right? That's, that's like finding oh, out you oh, have... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not saying Trump is great. I don't fucking like the guy. But look, this is like finding out that you have cancer, but you really want this wart from your finger removed. <laughs> That's essentially what we're saying here. Now, what these organizers are talking about here is that they want to use the power of the courts to push back against Trump. So if workers are ordered to go back to work before this pandemic and crisis is over, can take it to the courts and make it a health and safety issue. So going back to the courts, uh, what unions want to do is they want to go back to the courts, right? They want to make sure that, uh, that, that the courts can handle it. But here's the thing. Chris Maltz tried to do this with Amazon, and he was fired for it, right? Chris Maltz led a strike when Amazon executives told his warehouse workers to keep working after there was uh, an employee that tested positive for COVID-19. They deliberately put the lives of their employees, their families, and their customers in danger. Now, after firing Smalls, Amazon spun the narrative, right, claiming that he was the one that, was, that, that had a health and safety violation. Now, Amazon used this very tight defense of I'm rubber and you're glue, whatever I, you mm. say bounces off me and sticks to you defense. <laughs> the mm -hmm. classic, classic case, uh, I believe that was used in the Supreme Court in 1953, and it's been going <laughs> ever since. But, he, but that's the problem is that these courts mostly side with corporations. So this mm -hmm. doesn't particularly move us forward. Now, 
General strikes have shaped and defined America to its very core, right? According to W.E.B. Du Bois, black slaves freed themselves by using the tactic of a general strike. The way Du Bois saw this was that uh, slaves were just exploited workers who were in a constant struggle, not just for the means of production, but also to the means to themselves, you know? And in order to achieve this goal, they took up arms against their masters, escaped the plantation, and disrupted the global production of cotton from the South. So he makes these very large claims, right? Du Bois also claims that the Union was only able to clinch their victory because these slave, these slave rebellions on the farms that essentially what Du Bois is saying is that they were the general strikes, uh, that is what led to Union victory. These uprisings in the farms and the fact that these escaped slaves became Union soldiers turned the tide of the war. He says, quote, they wanted to stop the economy of the plantation system. And to do that, they left the plantations, which that's a huge statement to make right there, right? Which this basically says that the general strike is a way to collapse the capitalist economy to create and revolutionize a new economy. The first major general strike in American history was created by black slaves who created their own mm. freedom. They used the general strike to, you know, become a bald eagle soaring through the sky, <laughs> absorbing liberty for all. <laughs> That's what they did. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, if you like the content that we're putting up on this channel, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. All three of those things help this channel grow, help uh, other people see this channel and discover this channel. Um, platforms like YouTube and Facebook and uh, you know other, uh, other platforms don't particularly like to show content like this, show um, engaging content that talks about history and the truth and what's actually going on with our system at, at, at hand. So uh, I depend on you guys, the viewers, that if you guys like it, to make sure that you hit the like and then make sure that you share it with uh, whoever you think is going to enjoy uh, content like this, whether it's a friend or a family member or an enemy, whoever it is, uh, you guys could share that with. That would be awesome. And make sure that you're subscribed. Um, I, there, there's the more people that subscribe to this channel, again, the more that it'll be shown to other people and the more updates you'll get from my channel. I release videos uh, pretty consistently, uh, at least uh, a few times a week. Um, I do a live stream uh, via my Facebook page uh, uh, two or three times a week as well, where you get to talk to me and interact with me while we go over some you know, news stories that might have fallen through the cracks or mainstream media just doesn't touch at all. So. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys do that. Uh, the other way that you can help support this show is uh, by making a financial contribution. If that is, uh, if that is possible for you to do, uh, it, is, it is not a necessity. Uh, all of my content is going to be available for free. Very little goes behind a paywall. But if you do become a sustaining member via my website, uh, via Patreon, or via Bandcamp, it does give you unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content that nobody else gets. That's a little perk, that's a little thing behind the paywall. Uh, you get early uh, access to full episodes of Forkful of Noodles. Like these are, these are segments of a much larger piece. You get the larger piece before anybody else does. You get early access to that. Uh, you get uh, free tickets to the live virtual stand-up comedy shows where these clips are from. Um, and, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. There's going to be some merch coming up. Um, I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm going to be releasing some new merch as well. So, uh, keep your eyes, uh, out peeled for that. And that'll be available. All will be available on my website at krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N.com. Uh, I also have a new stand-up comedy album and, um, that is available on all of the platforms you get your comedy stuff from. And uh, one of the things I'm doing with these virtual stand-up comedy shows and the uh, merch sales, whether it's like the t-shirt stuff or if it's the album, is I am going to be donating half of the, um, 
half of the sales to a grassroots organization, uh, you know, like a mutual aid or a particular a grassroots venue that I've worked with um, or, you know, uh, an independent journalist or uh, something along those lines, something grassroots. So people that are bringing you the truth and bringing you the information, people that I use as sources for, for, for my comedy and for these pieces as well. So, uh, you know, by, by contributing and, and buying tickets or, or buying merchandise or buying those albums, uh, you, you're, you're contributing to also help um, a grassroots organization grow. Uh, so that is, uh, that's a cool little perk that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do my part uh, during, during this crazy age that we're all living in. So uh, I hope you consider going through the links, uh, checking out what you want to uh, be a part of, checking out what you can donate to, um, and, uh, and help, uh, help, help this channel grow, uh, help me put food on the table, earn a living, all that sort of stuff. Um, and help the, some, a, a grassroots organization um, grow and, uh, you know, find their path and what they're doing uh, to, to make this place a better world for everybody. So um, stay tuned. There's a lot more content coming up on this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for uh, being a subscriber or, or considering becoming a subscriber for this, this channel. Uh, until the next video, uh, see you on the road.